What it do, what it do, what it do, it is yours truly, Mr. Telefero. I told you guys I was going to get to this video sooner rather than later. After one of, to me, one of the most embarrassing weeks in Los Angeles Lakers history. Matter of fact, one of the most embarrassing seasons in Los Angeles Lakers history. Uh, it was topped off by Magic Johnson last week, quitting on the Los Angeles Lakers, randomly quitting. We'll get to that more in a second. I thought it was only right that I come do my top 10 moments that Magic failed at this position. He was technically the president of basketball operations, but he was reportedly not in the office much. He really never took the job oh so serious. I think it's one of those positions that look good on paper. And if he were able to turn it around, get the Lakers back to the NBA Finals, it would have looked great. But to do that, you got to be willing to put in the time. And he's Irving Magic Johnson. He just was never going to put in the time to that position. So it's only right we go through the 10 worst moments that I could think of off the top of my head of his tenure, Magic's tenure as the Los Angeles Lakers president of basketball operations. We're going to start this bad boy at number 10, and we're going to work our way on down to number one. Start with something that happened about a year or so ago, the handling of the Kawhi Leonard trade. Now there's been so much bad to happen to the Lakers over the last few months that a lot of people forget about this. There was an opportunity for the Los Angeles Lakers to acquire Kawhi Leonard last summer. And then get LeBron James as well. Or after you saw LeBron James, Kawhi was out there for the taking with the San Antonio Spurs. He demanded a trade out. He said he wanted to play in Los Angeles. He didn't care if it was the Clippers or the Lakers. All the Lakers had to do was give up Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Kyle Kuzma. Let me set off this caveat. I really like Kyle Kuzma, but I'd rather have Kawhi Leonard, a former Finals MVP, the way the Lakers handled that situation was wrong. They got pop pissed and pop was able to ship Kawhi to Toronto. Let me make it clear from what I was told, though pop didn't prefer to do business with the Lakers, if the Lakers were willing to give up those three young players, he would have just cut his losses with Kawhi and traded them to a Western Conference foe to the Los Angeles Lakers, but only for those three pieces. And Lonzo and Brandon Ingram have both been injured a lot this season. So put Kuzma with him, you would have had your second star alongside LeBron James. That looks like a fail to me. We're still talking about the handling of trades within that Lakers community. And yeah, they ruined this one. Paul George, a couple years ago, was on the open market via the Indiana Pacers. They were planning on trading Paul George because Paul George wanted out. He said, I'm not signing here long term. And at that point, the Pacers said, all right, we're going to trade you. The Lakers offer consisted of Brandon Ingram, and they wouldn't give up on the number two pick that the Lakers ended up turning in to Lonzo Ball. So let me get this straight. Last summer, for Kuzma, Lonzo, and Ingram, you could have had Kawhi. And the summer before that, it would have took even less Brandon Ingram and the number two pick that turned into Lonzo Ball. <sighs> yeah, the Lakers have not handled trades well. Trust me, we're only getting started with the Lakers handling of, of trades under the Magic Johnson regime. I don't give Magic that much grief for this one, but we got to say it's, it's pretty bad. Trading D'Angelo Russell and Timothy Mozgov for Brooke Lopez and the 27th pick of the Nets. Now, here's the caveat. I remember how bad it was for D'Angelo Russell at the time. Remember, he had just snitched on Nick Young. The morale of the team was down. Dude was known as a snitch around the league. How how were the Lakers supposed to know that they were going to miss out on a guy that's become an all-star, averaging 21 points and seven assists a game for the Brooklyn Nets? And that 27 pick turned into Kyle Kuzma. So I'm not as hard 
on Magic Johnson, as a lot of other people are for trading D'Angelo Russell, by the way. And again, this is looking back in hindsight. It just seems like D'Angelo Russell's game fit a lot better <laughs> with LeBron James than Lonzo or Rajon Rondo's game. All right? I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not as hard on Magic uh, about this trade as a lot of other people because I remember the time frame. D'Angelo at the time had to go and Magic traded him and it looks like it's, it was a mistake back in looking back in hindsight. Now this one, without a shadow of a doubt, was a mistake. You got Brooke Lopez and you let him walk. You talk about a guy that could have not only played well with LeBron James, what if you didn't know you were going to get LeBron James? Fine. But you got to assume you were going to try to get Kawhi, Kevin Durant, or one of these other top tier free agents you knew that would be available in the upcoming years. Brooke Lopez's game pretty much bounced off of all those top tier fours games. You let Brooke Lopez walk to the Milwaukee Bucks for one year, $3.3 million. You let him go. He goes to the Milwaukee Bucks, and now he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. He He's a seven-foot Clay Thompson, and you had him right there. What was one of the worst traits of that Los Angeles Lakers team last season? They couldn't shoot. They could not shoot. And you had a, a center that could shoot and bare minimum play a little bit of defense you let him go for absolutely nothing now Brooke Lopez about to get paid this summer and it's not going to be by y'all oh my goodness that, that's an L for Magic Johnson fam Magic what were you thinking gotta take it to the NBA draft man 2017 edition you drafted Lon Zobal. Now, this is an L. Hold this L, Magic. You got to take all accountability for this one. You drafted Lon Zobal. Okay, that went bad enough. Do you know some of the players that came behind Lon Zobal in the 2017 NBA draft? Jason Tatum, De'Aaron Fox, Larry Markkinen, Dennis Smith Jr., Donovan Mitchell, John Collins, his own teammate, Kyle Kuzma. And I really could name a, a lot of other players that have been at least more consistent. Maybe not as talented as Lonzo Ball, but definitely more consistent two years in of their NBA careers that was in that 2017 NBA draft. And not only did you draft Lonzo, Magic, I remember at the introductory uh, conference for Lonzo Ball, you told Lonzo, can you please save me a record? You backed the guy. You was like, yo, don't break all of my NBA records. He can't even stay healthy through a full season, Magic. De Dennis Smith Jr. was out there. I mean, gosh, Donovan Mitchell was out there. Jason Tatum was out there. What were you thinking? That is an L of extreme proportions. To this point, Lonzo Ball has not panned out in Los Angeles. It just gets worse for Magic Johnson. One of the guys you did draft right, you did get this one right a few years back, and this was before Magic, but the Lakers drafted Julius Randle. He was one of the right things about the Lakers. Last year, towards the end of the year, he was having a stellar season. Breakout performances, knocking down shots, getting to the rim, showing some explosion. Julius Randle averaged 18 and 10 for the Pelicans this year. And the Lakers let that walk last summer. Look, I know you thought you were going to go big fish swimming with LeBron and another star. But damn, LeBron and Julius Randle doesn't sound bad. LeBron, Julius Randle, and Kuzma, you're the Lakers. You could have found a way from a financial standpoint to get another good player. That's a nice nucleus to something that maybe couldn't win a championship, but definitely could be a three or four seed. And Julius Randle always plays hard fam you let julius randall a guy that might be an all-star in this league at one point you let him walk for absolutely nothing finding popular veterans last summer after you acquired lebron james this was stupid man so after the lakers got lebron i'm thinking okay you got lebron 
This season is not going to be the greatest if you can't acquire an Anthony Davis, you can't get Kawhi, you can't get all George, whatever. Okay, let's build, right? Let's see what we got in these young guys, and let's put some shooters around all these guys. Alonzo's not the greatest shooter. LeBron's never been the greatest shooter. Brandon Ingram's never been the greatest shooter. I know Magic and company, they're about to go to town and, and go get us some shooters out there on the market, right? They literally did everything but get shooting. They got no shooting, as a matter of fact. Ironically, this guy that was supposed to be a shooter, and I'm going to give LeBron a little bit of blame alongside Magic with this one. The only guy that could or have the reputation of being a shooter, Contavious Cotwell Pope, is a, is a clutch sports guy, LeBron's boys, and he couldn't make a shot on the court with LeBron. He, he couldn't make a shot. You went and signed celebrities that don't pan in and wins. You signed guys that no other team wanted to commit to long term. Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson, JaVale McGee, Michael Beasley. Do you understand the trend here? All very talented guys, but a little boneheaded in the head from time to time. And no other team out there would, be, would commit to these guys long term. And the Lakers signed all these guys. One year deal, but still signed. And none of these guys can shoot. What was the Lakers thinking? You put all that around LeBron? Magic's got to take the L for that one. And I still believe this is one of the dumbest NBA trades in NBA history. Cody. Ivanka Zubak. Do you know who the heck Zubak is? I do. He was the Lakers' best offensive center. Not a JaVale McGee or Tyson Chandler, the guys who needed you to pretty much lead them to the basket to score. Alley Oops. Little quick stuff, off offensive rebounds and stuff like that. No, Zubak was young and could actually get his own shot. And he was an asset towards acquiring a guy like Anthony Davis. Reportedly, the Pelicans were really high on Ivaka Zubak. What did the Lakers go do to Zubak at the trade deadline? They went and traded him to not only a Western Conference rival, a division rival, uh, the team that plays in Los Angeles with him. They traded Zubak and Michael Beasley for Mike Muscala. I can't make this up. Muscala's not even in the Lakers rotation right now. What the heck? They closed the season with, with Muscala not playing ball for them. That's one of the dumbest trades in NBA history. Magic, what the hell was that? You should have quit after that trade. That was beyond me. Damn, speaking of trades, around that February trade deadline that just passed by, the Anthony Davis trade saga was one of the worst handlings of a situation I've ever seen in my young life. Fam, Anthony Davis wants to be a Laker. We know what happened. He hired Rich Paul to try to stink his way to Los Angeles. I'm not mad at it. What they were trying to do was make a clear alley for AD to go to LA without the Boston Celtics being involved. Cody. Boston couldn't have Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis on their roster at the same time until this summer when Kyrie signs a new deal if he decides to stay in Boston. Meaning, the only team with the assets to go get Anthony Davis at the trade deadline was the Lakers. They messed this up every which way possible. Not only did they not acquire Anthony Davis at the trade deadline, they made everybody all the young players on that Lakers team were unhappy. Hell, some of the veterans were unhappy as well because everybody's name, not including LeBron James, was involved in trade rumors around Anthony Davis. And not only was your name involved in it, you got played Magic and Dell Demps of the Pelicans. Y'all, both idiots were on the phone with Woj at the same time, literally leaking information about the other team. And Woj was leaking it right to the fans. So, on one end, it'll be Dell Dimp saying, hey, the Lakers just offered Zubac, Ingram, Ball, the chef, the trainer, and everything you can think of. And Magic was on the other line saying, hey, the Pelicans just didn't take the offer of Zubac, Ingram, the trainer. Like, you're going back and forth telling each other's hands. And now all these young guys are like, damn, this guy that I've always looked up to in my, my life, LeBron James, one of my favorite players of all time, like a Kyle Kuzma, Ingram, Alonzo. He don't want me. He don't want to play with me. Their confidences were shot at that point and held the Lakers season went into a dumpster fire after that point of the season. 
and you were just getting LeBron back from injury, they lost to the Grizzlies, they lost to the Hawks, the Pelicans without, ironically, Anthony Davis. It was bad, bruh. That team quit after that failed trade attempt for Anthony Davis. Did I say quit? Last but not least, the worst part of Magic's tenure as the president of basketball operations for the Los Angeles Lakers. Magic Johnson quit on Jeannie Butts. And I'm not mad at the brother for wanting to go back to being Magic Johnson. It seems like a great life. But he spontaneously quit before a game. He didn't tell Jeannie Butts. He didn't tell the GM of the team, Rob Palenka. He didn't tell his head coach, Luke Wong. He didn't tell the team. He didn't specifically tell LeBron James, a guy whose home he was at at 12:01, to sign LeBron. He didn't tell anyone. I'm not even 100% if he, he sure if he told his wife Cookie. This dude spontaneously quit on everybody. You just can't quit, Magic. It's sending the wrong message, Magic. You quit on everything. You, you you quit on the daytime television show. You quit as the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Hell, you you quit on everything. Now you quit on the president of basketball operations, fam. How were you expecting guys to commit long term to the Lakers? You really thought you were gonna sign a free agent this summer, and you were halfway in, halfway out. Obviously, what? I've never seen anything like Magic Johnson. And then, by the way, he still has a smile that can light up a room. He just doesn't have the personality and the wherewithal to be a president of basketball operation. Hopefully, he's learned his lesson. Magic, go back to being rich, famous Magic. Go back to smiling and talking to players and tweeting and whatever else you want to do in that luxurious life that you live. What doesn't need to be in your future, though, is a front office position. You failed, fam. I just gave y'all 10 legit reasons why he sucked hot garbage in the Lakers front office, and who knows where they go from here. I came from nothing, but I want everything God has for me. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I still represent the culture. I got the kids that you are now tuned in. Tuned in. Yo, we locked in right now, Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Shout out to Mr. Telefair. You're watching Mr. Telefair TV. Mr. Telefair TV? Here with the Triple B's. You can't do nothing but win.